Alright, what's going on everyone? Today I have a budget arena deck to show you. This deck is very powerful and it only contains five rares. The deck is Celestia Life Gain. So first off, we have our creatures that gain life whenever a creature enters the battlefield. We have three of them. So 12 total, 12 total creatures that let us gain life when we play other creatures. And then we have another 12 creatures that will get plus one, plus one counters when we gain life. So 24 creatures total either gain life when we play other creatures or get a plus one, plus one counter whenever we gain life. So naturally we're just playing all these creatures and building up a ton of counters. Let's say we have like two life gain creatures in play and we play a celestial unicorn. We're gonna gain two life and those trigger individually, meaning the unicorn will get two counters and become a 5-4, potentially on turn three. And then it just snowballs from there. Everything makes everything else more powerful. We're just gaining more and more life and we're getting bigger and bigger creatures. We also have ways to make our life gain more effective, like with Clary Class and Angel of Vitality. They both make our life gain more powerful by giving us extra life. The cleric class can also start distributing plus one plus one counters and the angel can uh, become a big threat. It becomes a 4-4 flyer, so not bad. We also have Priest of Forgotten Lore and some utility lands. These all just smooth the deck out a bit by letting us draw cards or giving us the option of playing either lands or spells depending on what we draw. So just some, some mana smoothing here. And then our rares, we're playing Righteous Valkyrie and Angel of Destiny. These are the only rares in the deck. Five total, we're playing four Valkyrie one Angel of Destiny, so four rares, one mythic. Righteous Valkyrie is crazy, it gives us a source of life gain and a way to pump our board. Angel of Destiny is just an alternate win condition. It's probably not necessary, but I do like the ability to just win the game on the spot if we we're having trouble killing our opponent. And that's the deck. Of course, we aren't using rare lands, we're using basics, we're using snow tools. The weakest part of this deck without question is the mana base, but besides that, the deck is actually very solid and we can win against top meta decks. So definitely worth considering if you're looking for a new deck to play, especially if you don't have a lot of wild cards. So with all that said, let's play a few games with the deck and see how well this goes. All right, show me a good hand. Oh man, these lands are rough. This hand's fine, it's just, oh, the lands. Uh, the lands are definitely the weakest part of the deck. Tap lands are no fun. Oh, and there's another tap land. Uh, play a tap land. So the problem with playing lands like this, of course, is that we're always going to be a turn behind. Which is why it's definitely good to consider, um... What do we want to play here? Probably just the Orator. Uh, it's definitely worth getting, a, you know, pathways and stuff into the deck. Just, uh, cause, cause playing a turn behind is not good, but, uh, we'll, we'll probably be fine. What is this? Double strike. Um, opponent is going to be very aggressive, so it's gonna be important that we gain some life. Um, it might be worth just skipping on, uh, skipping on Trellisara. And maybe getting into this, although our lands entering tapped is rough, man. Rough. So, I guess we do just play Trellisara, cause what else are we gonna play here? We'll gain a life. We will scry. Um, I actually don't want payoffs. I want life gain. I want to try to survive. Uh, we can use this takedown to kill this thing though. So long as it doesn't get too much bigger. Hopefully it doesn't get too much bigger. We do have two righteous Valkyries. Uh, does that boost its toughness? It does not. It does. Shoot. Well, that's unfortunate. Um, yeah, we might just lose because this is too fast. Uh, no blocks. Okay. And we might have had a better chance if all of our lands weren't coming into play tapped. That's what's costing us here. We'll play this. Gain a life, scry. I mean, that's nice, but not good enough. So we'll put that bottom. We will have to chump block here. Um, potentially with Trellisara, which is unfortunate, but uh, might be necessary. This doesn't have trample. Just has double strike. So I mean, we have to block here. So we're just choosing. Do we want to lose our life gain? I think um, I think this is fine actually. All right. Now we play this first. That's gonna gain us four. Let us scry. Um, all this stuff is nice. Maybe I want lands, though. 
No, we'll just... We'll just, uh, we'll just do this. We're surviving, and now we can actually kill this. Because Trellisar is big enough. And we gain some more life. We're at 12. So we're, we're kind of okay here. We can kill this, uh, this Twin Blade now if they attack. We're doing okay. We, we kind of stabilized here. I would definitely trade Trellisar with this thing. Because after that's dead, we're not in too much threat. They might stay back now. If they do, that's great. No, they still attack? Um, I'm actually tempted to block it here. I, th I think we I think we trade. It, it feels bad, but I think it's worth it. I mean, we're, we're getting rid of four cards. So those are both dead. Sure. Alright, so what order are we playing things here? I want to kill this thing. I guess we play this first. Then we play this. Gain some life. Then we pay two for this. Kill this. Great. And... Uh, can we attack now? I guess we can. I'll attack for four. We can actually be the aggressor now. We're back at 18 life. So they go to 16. We're, we're winning this game now. Somehow. Uh, what's this do? Um, yeah, it's in making my stuff enter tap. That's fine. So we don't have a lot of power now, but we can we can upgrade this if we want. We have this, which uh, again not a cleric, which is too bad. But uh, can play this. We can gain two, which we'll gain four because of this. Oh, what's this doing? Uh, change the creature has double strike. So double strike and life gain is pretty good for them. We're gonna take all this. Um, there's my land. It's late. I think I'm just gonna play this. Gain some life. Oh, is this an angel or a cleric? Um, it is an angel or a cleric. I knew that. Totally knew that. Don't know what you're talking about. Why is my client frozen? Um, so I guess we attack all out, right? We're not in any danger now. They go to 16, we're at 25. I guess there is a danger that they pumped us up to obscene amounts. We'll see about that. They attack all out. This is fine. It's 7, so we go to 18. Sure. We, I think we just play this. Play this. I wanted to level this up, but we'll just do this. And attack all out. Bang, 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 bang. And that's... <laughs> that was a really bad game, and look what happened. Um, I would not consider that a good example of how this deck works. I mean, it was a good example of how this deck works, but it was an optimal hand with all the lands that turned tapped. We were so close to death, we almost died. And we're at 36 life because of all the life gain. And that shows you the power of Righteous Valkyrie too, because look how big of our stuff is. Holy crap, Righteous Valkyrie is insane. So there you go, that's one game. One game down. Easy. Not that easy, that was kind of difficult. But uh, we got there. All right, this um, uh, again, tap lands are killing me. I'm, I keep complaining about it, but man, do I hate tap lands. But uh, this will have to do. We need a land. Lands are rough in this deck, man. Lands are rough. Uh, speaking of tap lands, I'm gonna play this first, actually. We'll play this first, play Prosperous Innkeeper, turn two, Lotus Cobra, and a blue, uh, blue green deck. I wonder. If that's like the uh, the avalanche deck, could be. And uh, we could spin this right away and get this veteran down. Is that worth it? Yeah, because we have an untapped land next turn. Let's, screw it. Let's do that. Play this. Gain a life. All right. So next turn we have an untapped land. Could play any of these. Uh, opponents in blue green. So I'm not super worried about removal. Yeah, this is looking like the avalanche deck. Which is one of my favorite starter decks, actually. I, I just really like the the lands and Renin 7 and Ashaya stuff. Definitely looking like the starter deck. Wonder if it's upgraded. Who knows? Um, so what are we doing here? They're not going to have removal. I'm just going to play this. Gain a couple life. Uh, no attacks. Next turn, we might play this. The unicorn. That's a big creature. We're gaining so much life that it's not too threatening. 
but definitely the Avalanche deck. All these cards are on the Avalanche deck. Um, really wish this land didn't intertap, man. Oh, it's killing me. Kind of want to play this, to be honest. We'll gain four. Actually, we'll gain more than four because of this. Right, I forgot about that. So we play this. We gain a bunch. We gain two, four. Uh, yeah, we gain a bunch. We just gain a bunch. We, we go to 34. We'll attack for four flying. They don't have reach. Now we can just take this six and it doesn't even matter, really. They hit us for six. We go to 28. Which is fine. Draw two. Put a land in play. Um, if they did upgrade it, if they followed my guide, which is unlikely, but if they did, they'd have Renin 7, and that would ruin me because it has reach, the uh, the tokens have reach. So that's what I don't want to see. They could even play it now. They've got 5. No Renin 7, please. No, no upgrades. Don't want to see this deck upgraded. Don't like it. I mean, I did like it. That's why I upgraded it. Blizzard Brawl, that's also very good. Didn't kill my Righteous Valkyrie, so that's nice. I guess I just take all this. It's going to turn off Righteous Valkyrie. But we'll gain more life, it's fine. We'll gain way more life, holy. We do this. We'll gain a bunch of life. Then we'll play this. We'll gain three more life gonna turn righteous valkyrie back on and get three counters making the unicorn an eight seven uh, attack for four i don't want to risk these life gain things so we'll just attack for four so opponent goes to 12 if they attack with the eight four i'd probably just take it again go to 20 because i have lots of life gain here they have a blizzard brawl to kill my righteous valkyrie which it looks like they just i just saw these two things highlight they have a blizzard brawl that does weaken my board quite a bit that's a they didn't kill the righteous valkyrie that's kind of shocking i mean the the unicorn was very big to be fair i think i'm willing to kill this and trade one of these this is fine probably yeah i should have i should have traded the two lunarks because then we could cast one from the graveyard that's a mistake should have trade i should have blocked with both these but we go to 19, we're going to get a bunch of life, so it's fine. Trellisara. I really want to turn Righteous Valkyrie back on, but I also want to scry a bunch. So let's uh, let's play this. We'll gain a ton of life. Fun fact. As these triggers go through... Oh, Righteous Valkyrie. Yes, please. Two of them. That's not legendary. So Trellisara, now she has four counters, right? So when this triggers... Um, it, it'll gain us five, actually. She, she's a five-five. Um, oh, it already triggered. Uh, so we gain four from Trellisara. Because the counters go on first, and then we gain life equal to its toughness, which was four. Uh, we'll play this. We will gain more life. Oh, we don't need the scry. We're definitely playing the Righteous Valkyrie. Uh, Trellisara is already a 10-10, so that's good. Attack for 4. We have 30 life again. <laughs> We're back to 30. And if the opponent kills the Righteous Valkyrie, we have another one. If they kill Trellisara, well, we just have another up, oh, and they just concede. Because this deck is dumb, and it's only 5 rares. Only 5 rares. And, uh, there we go. It's pretty crazy. Alright, this hand is... Great, because we have untapped lands. Untapped lands are nice. So we'll play this this turn, because it doesn't matter. We'll play Orator into Unicorn, probably. I would assume. There's a Trellisara, but we need a way to gain life first. So we'll play this. Opponent is playing Black, which is a little bit scary with this deck, because we are vulnerable to board sweepers and spot removal. But uh, we'll see how this goes. We will play a land. I think we're just going to play this Unicorn. Don't trust that this Valkyrie will survive. Uh, attack for two. Don't think there are any flash creatures we need to worry about. One is playing Golgari. It's Go Merchant. So this might be like a Jund Treasure. Or like a Golgari Skeletal Swarming type of deck. Or just a Golgari Sack type of deck. They're looking at my Unicorn. Don't like it. Uh, Unicorn dead. Unicorn dies. 
They do have to sacrifice their creature to do it though, so that's not the worst. There's a tap land. I think we're just playing Trellisara here. I don't want to play Valkyrie just yet, so we'll play this. We'll gain a life. We will scry. That's good, but not exactly what I'm looking for. So I, th I think I'm just going to bottom that. Attack for two. If we already have another payoff. I'd really like another... Another life gainer, really. Another merchant. Gonna kill my Trellisara too? Gonna kill my Trellisara again? Alright, well, we've seen this before. The good news is they're trading two cards for one, so it's like... Uh, we got another one of those, so that's interesting. Um, so we will play this. Gain a life and scry. That's good. I can play this and Righteous Valkyrie next turn, so I think that's fine. And we'll play this. Gain another life. Get two counters. Keep that on top. Attack for two. Oh, right. I I'm getting... We're getting close to board sweeper territory, though. So that's a little scary. Shadow's Verdict could be coming down this turn. And that uh, wipes my board. Wipes out my entire deck. Oh, uh, yep, that too. So like I said, uh, board sweeper territory. But uh, we do have a Righteous Valkyrie. We're already at 24 life. We'll play this. We will play this. They gotta be running out of removal, right? They got three cards. Come on, man. You can't still have removal, surely. Surely there's no more removal. There's another Skullport Merchant. If they do the same thing again, but they eat it eating alive. Okay, they don't. We play this first, actually. Play this. We'll gain two life. Or we'll gain, uh, yeah, we'll gain two life. And then we'll play this. We're gonna gain two, four, right? And oh, six actually, because priest will also uh, gain a life. So we go to thirty, and now our stuff's bigger from righteous Valkyrie. Attack for four. Oh, and it goes to thirteen. The danger now is if they board wipe, we don't have any gas. We just have an innkeeper. They board wipe. We probably level this up first, then play this after. We might level this up next turn anyway. Just so we don't overcommit to the board. Alright, they sacrifice that, draw two. Digging for a board sweeper for sure. Got 11 damage, which isn't enough to kill them. There's the Meat Hook Massacre, that's unfortunate. So there goes all my stuff. Yep, they gain three. There's another land. So I think we're just gonna level this up this turn. We'll play these next turn, hopefully, draw into something else as well. Like a Trellisara would be perfect because we can start scrying. Well, that's dead, but that's fine. What, we, what I want to see is the Trellisara for sure. I want to be able to start scrying. That is not that. So... Can't do much really. We'll just play this. Get a treasure. Play this. Gain two life. We only got one card. But we just don't have anything. We've got, a, we've got enough life that if we draw Angel of Destiny, we win. I could sacrifice the treasure for this, but this isn't worth it. Because this uh, the backside isn't that useful. It's okay, but it's not crazy. The opponent's just playing like Board Sweeper Tribal. I mean, it's looking like the the Gugari treasure deck, I guess. No. No with the lands. Please, man. Um, I guess we just let them trade. I don't know if they can kill this. I guess we don't. We'll play a Flyer, though. Play a flyer, gain a life, and now we're just hoping for Angel of Destiny. That gains Death Touch, that's fine. That's perfect. We'll play that. We'll gain a life, get a counter. We will attack for one. They have another board sweeper, I'm just gonna be sad. It's gonna be hard to win through three board sweepers, that's our biggest weakness. Biggest weakness is... The mana base, the tap lands, and uh, having our board wipe. And fair matchups, like in, in non-removal heavy matchups, were like insanely dominant. But in control games, uh, not so much. I don't want to play this, I don't think. I want to keep a life gain creature and a payoff in my hand. Because we're playing against board sweepers, I don't want to overcommit to the board. So, going to... I think I just have to risk this innkeeper. I can't keep playing around this shambling gas. I'll let them uh, trade with it if they want. They can kill both of these, but that's fine. 
We do a five, bring them down to... Nope, they got a removal spell. Holy crap, well, we gain a life. But they kill this, they give this minus one, minus one, I'm guessing. Sure. I want to wait till we get a... Something they can get a counter before I play this. Opponent draws another land. That's pretty good. We'll play that. We will level it up. Yeah, I'll play this. Cause I wanna I wanna pay five for this next turn. Uh attack for one. They don't have any man lands down here. Or up here. So that's fine. So if this doesn't die, if they don't have it doesn't die. Well great. We're going to pay five for that. We are going to return. Righteous Valkyrie. That's going to gain some life. We'll put a counter here. Uh, put a counter here. I want to put the counters on the stuff that they don't want to kill. Because they definitely want to kill the Valkyrie. Right? So, if that's going to die, I'd rather pump these up so they have counters after the Valkyrie dies. Assuming they have a removal spell. That's fine. Oh, it couldn't kill... I, uh, can't kill angels anyway, so... That's why that happened. Well, we bring them down to nine. So this deck has like mass Mihook Massacres. Oh, and we win. So five rares and we just beat a deck with Mihook Massacres and that uh, Saga. Like uh, how many rares did they have? They didn't have rare lands, notably. Although they do have a pathway. So we won with a uh, 46 life. All right, so budget life gain. Five rare budget life gain. What are my thoughts? So the deck is crazy when things go unanswered it's a it's a snowball deck the longer things go unanswered the crazier and more powerful this deck gets now if we can keep these you know these life gain creatures a uh, lunark veteran and passion or rare prosperous innkeeper these can stay in for a few turns while uh while these other creatures uh soak up counters it's a uh, it's pretty crazy uh the weaknesses definitely board sweepers we don't have a lot of ways to recover from a board sweeper angel of destiny is probably our only way to like win the game if our board gets wiped and like we we need to recover somehow like if our board gets wiped and we have no hand or top decking stuff like lunark veteran which is really bad like we our top decks are terrible if we're empty-handed so this deck is bad off the top of the deck but if it can go unanswered if things go you know if things stick on the battlefield for a few turns it's insane. It's it's completely crazy. Um, another weakness of the deck, without question, is just the mana base. Uh, these tree lines suck. This land sucks. Everything sucks about this mana base. Um, so if you want to fix that, the obvious thing is to just do a, a pathway, and you know we we get these four out for some pathways, and we get. The, I never remember what the Innistrad lands are called, but we do a Innistrad, uh, rare lands. And we do uh we do a quick little like well uh, one of these and then like two of these and one of these and we put four of those in and bam it's so much better. So much better. That just it immediately fixes the deck. Uh makes everything just work better. So but beyond that guys, uh five rares, deck's crazy, definitely a little janky in that you know you kind of need things to go your way. Um don't want the opponent interacting too much. But for a deck that you can throw together for, you know, five rare wild cards, if you already have some of these, you might not even need to spend that many wild cards. The rest of the deck, all commons and uncommons. So it's a cheap deck that you can throw together, have some fun with, uh, complete your green, white daily quests or whatever. Um, fun deck, silly, ridiculous, um, and cheap. So there you go, guys. That is budget life gain. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.